Hello everyone, my name is Tao Wu. The topic of this presentation is the generative modeling for 3D contents. And I will be presenting a 2020 survey titled Learning Generative Models of 3D Structures, which covers many concepts in 3D representations and generative networks. 3D graphics are now critical to many industries like gaming and animation, as well as in arch architecture and interior design. However, due to the huge cost in data capturing and human labeling, computer vision systems sometimes suffer from the lack of training data. And this is where generative models show their benefits. Generative models, in contrast to discriminative models, learn a, a, the probability distribution over an input space X. So instead of learning to predict some attribute Y given an input X, a generative model learns the entire input distribution and thus can sample objects directly from X. Therefore, it can be very useful in simulating real-world environments and synthetically generating training data. This survey is like an educational report targeting new graduate students in computer science. The authors survey a large range of historical work and recent progress on generative 3D modeling. Let's begin with the structure-aware representation. We focus on learned generative models of a structured 3D content. A learned model is trained with data rather than by hand or by rule-based systems. Structured 3D shapes and things are collections of substructures and each substructure may be decomposed into sub-substructures. For example, an indoor scene of a room consists of a chair, a desk, and a bed, etc., while the chair itself can be decomposed into a base, a seat, and a bag. The term structure-aware means to exp uh, express 3D entities while allowing manipulation of their high-level structure. A structure-aware representation must contain some ways to represent two aspects the geometry of the atomic elements of the entity, and the structural patterns. In previous lectures, we have covered many popular rep representations of the low-level geometry of individual objects, such as point clouds and triangle mesh. Other alternatives include the implicit surface, which is basically a function whose output determines whether a point is inside or outside of a surface. There are also many ways to represent 3D structures as compositions of atomic parts. These representations include segmented geometry, which links a label to each part of the entity's geometry, and part sets, which is basically an ordered set of atoms, and relationship graphs with edges between different parts, and hierarchies, or sometimes we call them trees. And by combining relationship graphs and hierarchies, we can have hierarchical graphs like this. Last but not least, a deterministic program is perhaps the most general way. It can be made to output any of the previous representations. A program is beneficial for making patterns clear and allowing easy editing by users. Then, in this section, I'll talk about the prominent methodologies for learning generative models. Let's look at the flowchart dif uh, of different syn synthesis methods. Starting from the leftmost leaf, when we have only a few training examples available, it would be best to use a constraint-based program synthesizer, which tries to find the minimum cost program while satisfying some constraints. Then when we are given a larger data set, which is not large enough to apply deep learning methods. Classic probabilistic models are the best fit. Or more specifically, when the type of content has a fixed structure, probabilistic graphical models like Bayesian Network and Markov Random Field are possibly good choices. If the structure can vary across the dataset, for example, when chairs can have three or four legs, or it can be with or without a bag, then a probabilistic context-free grammar is better here. The term context-free grammar, or CFG, is commonly used in natural language processing. 
It consists of a start symbol, a set of terminals, and a set of non-terminals, along with a set of rules that map a non-terminal to another layout. In this example here, the grammar has one non-terminal f and three terminals, the left arrow, the right arrow, and the leaf node. After applying a sequence of rules to a start symbol, we can get a tree like this, which contain, contains only the terminals. In NLP, the derived tree is also referred to as a sentence. A probabilistic context-free grammar augments CFG with a probability for each rule, as we can see here on the right side of each rule. Then the probability of deriving such a tree is the product of all the applied rule probabilities. The dynamic recursive nature of PCFG makes them well suited for dynamic model structures. When a large amount of training data is available, deep neural networks are often proved to be the best choice. An autoregressive model is one of the examples of such generative DNN models. It iteratively consumes its output from one iteration as the input to the next iteration. For example, for example here, the model inserts one object at a time to finally generate an indoor scene. However, the weakness of autoregressive models is noticeable. If one step drifts from the training data, it can cause the subsequent output to diverge further. So to prevent such drift, we may, we may prefer to use VAEs or GANs, which are pretty popular in recent years. The core idea behind is to sample over a low-dimensional latent space and then learn a generator that maps latent vectors to actual 3D shapes which are hard to sample. In contrast to autoregressive models, both VAEs and GANs use a global latent variable to control the generation, and they are trained with a reconstruction loss between the input and the generated output. Thus, VAEs and GANs often perform better than autoregressive models in terms, of, in terms of global coherence. And in addition, the performance of different neural networks also varies for different structured data representations. And here are some examples of appropriate networks for some data structures. Now let's move on to the application of visual program induction, which means to synthesize a plausible program that recreates some 3D content. This involves recovering the generator program from existing 3D shapes. Some early instances learn to reconstruct 3D shapes via um, simple geometric primitives. For example, this 2017 work learns to decompose shapes into primitives and use chamfer distance as a loss function. In a more recent work, the model can output a 3D shape program consisting of loops and other high-level structures. The system can also execute the program to reconstruct the shapes. Some other work try to perform visual program induction directly from 2D images. Some work can infer in programs that generate 2D diagrams directly from hand-drawn sketches, and the inferred program can, can be used in downstream tasks like image editing, as shown here. Visual program induction allows efficient and flexible scene manipulation. The paper also surveys some other applications of generative models for 3D content. As a recap, we talked about learning structure-aware generative models of 3D content. We discussed various representations of individual atoms as well as structural patterns that combine them together. We covered many generative modeling methods with their strengths and weaknesses. Lastly, we went through applications of these technologies. And that's the end of this presentation. Thank you.